Welcome. I have ordered the game's albums from least favourite to most favourite, and I've just given some brief reasons about why I place them where I have. In last place is the album that perhaps had the least amount of promo. I think it's fairly comfortably game's worst proper solo release. There isn't one great song that I wanted to play over and over. The beats are above decent, but with all of the samples that have been used on well-known records, particularly during the first half of the album, it's just always felt a bit odd to me. Uh, it's hard not to like anything that samples Foster Silver's Misdemeanor, as Bumden does, or The Message, as F Orange Juice does, but it feels like I've heard it all before. Uh, I probably prefer the more original second half when I have revisited this. Born to Rap it's tough to pull off a double album and this album adds to that sentiment. Talk about overstaying its welcome, it just doesn't feel like a structured album with all of the different themes and types of tracks amongst the 25. For example, there are multiple songs that feel like they could have been final songs, as this was meant to be his last album. Uh, his ear for beats is still on point, but not to the same degree as before. There are fewer bangers here too than most of his other projects. The Hard West Side was the song that I found to have the most replay value, and there were other good songs, but not quite enough to keep in the playlist. The Documentary 2.5 This is considered to be better than Part 2 by The Populist, but I don't subscribe to that. It doesn't have as many below average songs as this one, maybe, but there's less I love here. The argument for Game having so many features on his albums is more valid. The first two tracks feel like Anderson Pack songs. Wayne returns for another average hook. Intoxicated is only Dion feels like almost an interlude. We have Game's son's lackluster rapping, and then the other average posse cut. Uh, posse cuts like My Flag, The Homies, and Moment of Violence. Quick's Groove is one of the highlights here where Game does his best Sugar Free impersonation on verse 1. And the Nas feature, The Ghetto, is another one worth going back to, but yeah, I never got the big deal with itself. The Red Album. The Red Album is probably Game's most inconsistent hit or miss album. Ricky is epic. The Good, The Bad, The Ugly features some original ideas in all areas, including the writing. Born in the Trap, produced by DJ Premier, is enjoyable boom bap. The City is grand, even though Game lets Kendrick steal the show. But everywhere else, there's many decent songs, but not many that are worth going back to. It's worth noting here that the Game released a number of mixtapes prior to this album, and they featured some songs that he should have saved for this, in my opinion. The Town, Lost, and Monks in My Head are a few that beat a lot of what ended up on, on here. The game's biggest strength as a rapper for most of his career has been his ear for beats and that continued on the documentary too. The album begins with some ear catching production on songs like Step Up, Don't Trip and Standing on Ferraris and then later on the documentary too features some great rhymes. The high points are fairly good but then you've got the LA Shoutout track as the closer that we've heard countless times, the Kanye system Moolah that is forgettable, Drake's boring verse 100, and other weaker moments like hashtag just bring the album down. But I do, as I said, prefer this more than 2.5. LAX. After two great albums to kick off his career, this doesn't quite have the same bite to it. Overall, there is more of an upbeat, poppy sound here. Examples that are songs like Angel, Gentleman's Affair, and Kelly Sunshine. The thing is though, the production is still pretty great throughout because as mentioned, the game's strength has always been easier for beats and it's no different here. Like with his debut, this could have been cut back a song or two, but the quality never slips too far. Letter to the King, State of Emergency, Dope Boys and Money are highlights. Songs like Spanglish from the Deluxe Edition are bangers as well, uh, proving that the game made a lot of good music around the time of this release. Jesus Peace There are a couple of minor missteps on this, like the opener that I never listened to with Meek Mill's yelling delivery and all that lady, but I do go back to many of these songs a lot. A handful are amazing with crisp, lush production. The deluxe and bonus tracks are worth checking out too. Blood Diamond is one I've always loved. I must say though, while I like it, I've never gotten the fuss with Arle Blue Maye. Uh, people speak on it like it's the best thing since sliced bread, but I think it's a good song, but it's not in, it's not in his top 20 to 30 songs, I don't think. 
Anyway, this is an underrated project and not far from his second best album. Doctor's Advocate. I remember hearing One Blood for the first time and just loving it and that still stands up today. It's got such a great production with rhymes that are catchy and it's... I'm not great with remembering lyrics, but that's one that I could rap in a karaoke pretty easily. Following up at Abu Like the Documentary was always going to be tough, but many argued that this is better, and I couldn't really argue too much with that. Uh, it is more straight up West Coast sound than his debut. It just it's hard. I go back to this less than the documentary, but there is little a little more quality control, making it solid from front to back. And as mentioned, the production just bangs. True needed 50 and Dre. Not the game. The Documentary In first place is of course the game's major label debut. It does overstay its welcome a touch with some weaker tracks in the final third. I find that every time I go through it. But the quality never slips too far and most of the songs are great. Even before my hatred of 50 Cent, I never loved the huge singles he's featured on like others. I remember them dropping and I liked them, but I was never infatuated with them, you know, like I was with One Blood that I mentioned before. The title track, West Side Story, Don't Need Your Love and We Ain't are a few that I could listen to on repeat all day. They should have kept Snoop on the hook of West Side Story though. It makes more sense, doesn't it, given the title. Lots of great songs, a lot of great production. Every heavy hitter on this basically offering beats and it just, as I mentioned, so many songs that I'm not tired of 17 years later. So that's it. That's the game's albums from my least favorite to most favorite. I'm looking forward to his new one dropping soon and hopefully that is at least in the top five. Uh, I do think from what I've heard so far from the snippets, it sounds like it'll be a bit harder. So hopefully... Um, Less of that soul type of stuff that was on Born to Rap and more of that that real hard West Coast banging beats that, that I like so much because he, he does those very well. Thanks for watching.